continue from there. Hallelujah. We're going to continue from that scripture which is in Ephesians chapter 5 from 16 to 17. Now let me read it again. It says, So be very careful how you live, not being like those with no understanding, but live honorably with true wisdom, for we are all living in evil times. Take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purpose. Let me take that again. So, be very careful how you live, not being like those with no understanding, hallelujah, with no understanding but live honorably, with true wisdom, for we are all living in evil times, praise God, we are all living in evil times, it says, take full courage, take full advantage of every day as you spend your life. For his purpose. Praise God. So at the end of that scripture, you can see that the only reason why we are here, hello sister, the only reason why we are here is to do what? Is to live for his what? For his purpose. Is it for our own purpose? 
Is it for our children? Is it for our husband? Is it for our relations? Is it for our friends? Is it for any other person? But for who? For God. For His purpose. Hallelujah. For His purpose. Not for my husband, not for my children, not for anybody, but for the purpose which you and I were sent here. There is a purpose. There is a purpose. Before you came here, there's already a purpose that was injected inside of you. There was already a purpose. It's been there before you were born. Hallelujah. Ah, somebody will get a revelation this morning. Someone will get a revelation this morning. That you will no longer walk the way you used to walk. That you no longer believe the way you used to believe. But the Lord will take you to another dimension. That you will get a brighter and a higher revelation. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The topic for last week, the same topic we have this week. Is a live for purpose. Because that is why we are here. Hallelujah. That is why we are here. Everything we pass on, everything we follow, but there is a reason why we are here. Hallelujah. Pleasures doesn't last. Hallelujah. If you check Hebrews chapter 11, 25, it says the pleasure of sin only lasts for a short time. The pleasures of sin, it only lasts for a little time. It only lasts for a little moment, a little time. Hallelujah. What about your passion? Hello. Passion. That passion that you cannot do without. That passion, that thing that you like so much, that you feel you cannot do without. The Bible says it will not last so long. Hallelujah. Whatever I am saying to us this morning, I am not speaking on my own. I am speaking according to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. When you go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, it says, We brought nothing into this world, auntie. Hello. Say, when you came to this world, you carried dollars from your hand and came. When you came to this uh, world, you came with this clothes, Abby. Hello. Uh, good. When you came to this world, you came with your knee, Abby. When you came, you came with your belt or with your shoes or with this jewelry that I'm wearing here that is shining like this or with this my watch or with this wedding ring. I didn't come with anyone who you did not come with anyone. We came out naked. Hey, we came out naked and we will return out naked. <laughs> No one is bound to miss what God has to do in this season. If you are able and willing to hack into instruction, you will not miss it. Hallelujah. You can naked and you will live naked. Everything will drop. We will return back the way we came. So that time you are busy saying I cannot do without this thing. Begin to have another thinking. Begin to rethink. You that you're listening to me, you are saying, Oh, I cannot do without this particular habit. It is my lifestyle, it is my passion. Begin to have a routine. Hallelujah. Because the passion doesn't last, it will not last. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, We brought nothing into this world. First Timothy 6 7. We brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out. So, ah, That's right. no matter the position you are operating in this frequency, or you are operating in this earthly realm, the day the heart stops breathing, everything drops down. The heart stop talking, everything drops. Your millions, your billions, your mansion, everything. You are not taking anyone. You are not permitted to go with even a single broom or a needle. I don't know whose revelation needs to catch fire this morning. Hallelujah. 
We are going with nothing. We will go back the same way. You are not permitted to go with anything. Hallelujah. Amen. What about prestige? It does not last either. I am this. My prestige. How dare you? Now, this is why the Lord told us a story in the scripture. Where he told everyone, he said, humble yourself when you get to a location. I have seen people, when they get to a location, they are like this. Don't they know who I am? Don't they, I'm waiting for them to notice me, to go and put me in the high table. Do they understand my prestige? Do they understand what I am working on? Do they understand who I am? Do they understand the position I have? Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord said, humble yourself when you get to a location. Go and sit at the back. So that the one who invited you will say, ah, no, my sister. You don't belong to the back. You belong to the front. Hallelujah. I remember one particular time when I was still fellowshipping. When I was still fellowshipping with Daughters of Light. One beautiful day I was sitting at the back. Nobody knows me. But the woman cited me. She said, no, you are not meant to be sitting at the back. You are meant for the front seats. Hallelujah. So those of you that still have this shoulder part, shoulder. Hallelujah. I don't know why they even stop doing that shoulder part. Okay, put your shoulder was becoming too high. No, but really this guy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hear me, oh. Like I always tell us, I don't have any other life apart from this. So the more I do the gospel, the more I enjoy myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not going with anyone who will live on. Your prestige, you go. You that feel so pompous, so proud, so arrogant. Sister, calm down. There was a little boy video that went viral. He said, mommy be coming down now. Mommy be coming down. When the mother was about to lash him, he said, Mommy, please just be coming down. Hallelujah. When you remember that that prestige will not take you anywhere, sister, be coming down. Just be coming down. When you remember that shoulder that you're puffing up cannot even take you to the gate of eternity, sister, be what? Be coming down. Hallelujah. Why? Because this thing only has a little time with you. It will not last. Hallelujah. It will not last. It cannot last. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you look at Mark 10, 31, it says, Many people who seem to be important now. So many people who seem to be important now. Hallelujah. He said, will be the least important in what? In eternity. The least important in eternity. It goes on and on. Hallelujah. Those of you that feel so big now, praise God, you will become, see there are things. I want to believe there are things we hear and we are humble. I want to believe there are things we hear, there are things we get, there are revelations we get That is the reason why you've been sent here. Praise God. We need to understand that whatever it is, it will not last for a long time. If you like, be the president. How many presidents have been on this seat? But after eight years. Hello. But after eight years, you step down. Another person jump up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. To walk carefully in these evil days, you must use your time wisely to walk carefully in these evil days. You must use every minute of your time wisely. Ask yourself. Use it wisely. Correct yourself. 
when you see yourself going to the areas or the corners you don't expect to see yourself caution yourself hallelujah one day I think while we were still fixing our chandelier light the people made a mistake and they never cared to call me until the day I wanted to fix the I called the people to fix the light hallelujah and when I called the company they told me oh pastor we're very sorry ma we're very sorry oh um the, we, we, the thing will be coming in after some days and I said so you notice it and you did not tell me earlier you allowed me to go and, to go and bring someone that will fix it that has already charged me by day. Okay, I entered my car and I go to the office, to their office. I say, how can you? How can you? So the owner of the place was like, Madam, calm down, calm down. I said, can't you? Why didn't you need to tell me you made a mistake? So that after we correct the mistake, I can now. Now, even if I was right, but sister. I regretted the way I behaved. Hello. <laughs> Even if I was right in my action, I still believe there is a better way to follow it. I still believe there is a better way. Yes, I might be angry. But for me to go to the to that company, and I was like, what well, at least I should have calmed down. You know what? Before I left them, before I left them, I was not ashamed that I spoke to them that way. But I went to the woman. I said, Madam, I shouldn't have spoken to you. He said, No, 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 no. Ah, please, ma, it's our fault. I said, No, no, no. Oga, I am sorry. I shouldn't have spoken to you this way. Auntie, I'm sorry. He said, No, no, madam. Ah, madam. The woman had to escort me. Because in to tell you how the anger was, I could not wait to come. I, <laughs> I parked on the other side and crossed over. Hallelujah. Be conscious of your time, my sister. Praise God. What of us I am crossing back the trail of Jamni? No, we have to be realistic of the life we are living. Hello. wisely. Hallelujah. To walk carefully in this evil day, you must use your time wisely and use it well. You must understand that the will of God is for you to fulfill his purpose. Understand his will and be what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Understand his will and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. He says, therefore, look carefully. Look carefully how you walk. Your time is very important. Every time that has gone out of us, we cannot retrieve it back. It is gone, it is gone. So what our brother Paul here is saying to each and every one of us is that there is a reason why we've been sent here and we must learn to use our time and use it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. To work carefully in these evil days, you must think carefully about how you will spend your life in these evil days. You must think about it. Hallelujah. And you must carefully, skillfully apply the word of God every minute of your life. So you saw why I went back. Did you see why I went back to that woman and to the husband? Because the both of them were in their office that day. You saw why I went back to the man and the woman. I said, Auntie, I am sorry. I was angry. And I spoke to him. It's not in my nature to speak like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen. There is God created us with the same spirit of anger. But it's how you manage it. How? 
and the how the spirit of God. Because while I was in the spirit of the Lord said, you are not supposed to talk about it. And I needed to humble myself and go and apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. That man and the wife, they call me all the time. Ah, mother, we have not seen you. Ah, I hope you are enjoying the light. If I want to trip back my steps and go and apologize, in their heart, they will say, ah, this woman, ah, she got angry, although it's about fault. Maybe they might not see it that way. But let me tell you, the steps that I took changed their mind. If they love me 50%, they love me more than 100. Hallelujah. You must carefully apply God's word. God's word. Every minute of your life. Apply God's word every time in your life. And you must be ready to always apply the will of the Lord in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This one I'm going to be sharing some ways you can align with God's purpose in your life. I'm going to be sharing some few ways that the Spirit of the Lord has helped me. I'm going to be sharing these ways with us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you have your pen and paper ready. Praise God. Number one thing, to align yourself in the purpose of God is to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Hello. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. You know why? When you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, you can never go wrong. Even when you look stupid. <laughs> Even when it doesn't sound good to the ears of so many. Even when it doesn't appear beautiful. Even when it doesn't appear rosy. When you allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead you, hear me, you can never go wrong. You can never miss it. Ah, listen. There were things I have said to myself. I remember one story. This woman so much offended me, a woman that I helped so many years back. And the thank you I got was insult. And it's not today I've been getting it. Hallelujah. I was so angry and I said to myself, I will never help anybody again. <laughs> so one faithful afternoon I was praying in my office, in my shop, then the little shop I had. I was praying, taking my afternoon prayers. And the Spirit of the Lord said, you see that woman, you say you will not scorn. You see that woman, you say you will not help again. You see that woman that offended you on her. Ah, I say it wrong. Ah. Well, this cannot be the Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. This is my village people. It cannot be the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I was struggling with the Holy Spirit. I said, cannot be you. Ah, uh ah, -uh, God, why now? You, you, you cannot go to her. Tell her to call you. So, hello, my facts were beautiful. My facts were presentable. I had the A's, all the A's. But hear me. When you are walking with the Holy Spirit, you can never go wrong. Hallelujah. You can never go wrong. I tried to battle with it in my place of prayer. I gave in. I said, devil. Controlled my emotions. I said, Yes, I know Lord, that this is your voice. I told the devil, I said, Before you break my neck, I will break your own. Hallelujah. There are things when the Bible is saying that the children of God suffer in violence. And that is the, it's only the violent ones that take it by force. Hallelujah. That is only the violent ones that take it by force. What do you think the scripture was saying? Hello. What did you think the scripture was saying? Did you think the violence is only by taking your property? And you think your violence is only by taking the things that the enemy took from you? You think that your violence is only by taking the property they took away from you? <laughs> the violence joined the word of God. You must be willing to take the word of God with violence. 
that is for you to agree to what you have disagreed to yourself. You must be willing to say, yes, Lord, and take it. I said, I will break the neck of the devil before he breaks my own. I picked up my phone. I called the woman. She did not pick. I called the second one. She did not pick. I called the third one. She did not pick. I said, Holy Spirit, you see, I've done my part. And I was ready to, you know, I was ready to justify myself. I have done my bit. I have obeyed. The Holy Spirit said, you can do more. Okay. I called, she didn't pick us. Okay. At least if she not pick because she will see message. I took my phone, I sent because I said, I'm just calling to know how you are feeling. God bless you. Call me when you see this call. The next one hour. I never knew the lady I was talking with is almost at the verge of giving up. She called me back. She said, I cannot believe that you called me. you called me even the person that I betrayed because of you truly has forgotten me but you that helped me that did all this thing to me and I some of my people came to join force just for me to fight you you are the same person that is calling me to know how I'm feeling Malik Immediately she spoke that way. I had goosebumps put all over my body. I said, Holy Spirit, I love you. I love you, Lord. I said, Where are you? She told me. I went to visit her. She was bedridden, sick. Hallelujah. Her husband also left her. Hallelujah. With the help of some people around me, we took this lady to the hospital. And we started interceding on her behalf. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, like I said, allow the Holy Spirit. Number one thing is to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, to guide you. Even when it looks stupid. Even when it doesn't sound good. Allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead you. Hello? Allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead you. Praise God. Romans, can we put to Romans? Romans 8, 14. It says, for all those who are led by God's Spirit, those are God's sons. Hallelujah. Who are left? They are what God's sons. Hallelujah. Our ability to tap into our calling is much easier when we make decision based on the leading of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Number two thing we must be ready and willing to do is to let go of distraction. Hello? Let go of distraction. You want to align yourself. Yay! You want to align yourself to that purpose that you've been sent here for. Let go of distraction. Eh? Because at that time you are making that decision. At that time, distraction will come in contour. Yes, I experience this all the time. I experience this every time. At that time, you are about to make a critical decision. Distraction, it will look as if they blow trumpet for them. They will come from left, right, center, up, down, every corner. Eh? But when you have a revelation of where you are going, of the decisions you're about to make, none of those distractions that we call no, that we hit you, but none of those distractions can pull you down. You will be able to manage through it because why? Wherever your mind is, there God is there with you. Wherever you position your mind, God is there with you. 
Hallelujah. The Bible tells us to, to keep a close look, a close watch on how we live. Hallelujah. He said we should stay true to what is right. Stay true to what is right. You know that this is a decision you want to make. And the next day somebody says, oh, let's do it this way. And you know that that's what you want to make is what is aligned to your destiny. You should know. Listen, like I said, wherever your mind is, that is where God will be with you. Eh? If you say your mind, if you want your mind to focus on distraction, no problem. Wherever your mind is, your body will follow it there. So, but wherever your mind is focused on that purpose, your body, no matter the distraction that comes, your body will follow it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The third thing is discover who you are in Christ. Why did I say this? When you know who you are in Christ, that's why the tribulation that comes. Despite the tribulation that comes your way, despite the humiliation that comes your way, despite whatever that comes your way, hello, it will not reduce who you are, and it cannot stop who you are. Hallelujah. Because our purpose as a believer is to build the kingdom of God. Your purpose, my purpose. Is to build the kingdom of God. Why do we go for evangelism? Why do we encourage people to, to talk to one another? To go for evangelism? Or you think your 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 your, your Christianity is for you alone? You would have feel very comfortable. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm a believer, and you are comfortable where you are. You are comfortable. You are relaxed. When other souls are there perishing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Your purpose, our purpose as believers here is to build the kingdom and not to scatter one another. Not to pull down one another. Not to destroy one another. Our purpose is to build the kingdom wherever you are. Are you in the market? Are you in your office? Wherever you are. You don't need to wait to be the four corners of the world. Four corners of that your church building before you can build the kingdom. Hello? You don't need to wait to be the church before you can build that kingdom. Before you can build the kingdom of God, you don't need to wait to go to the church. Wherever you are, in your house, in your place of work, in your office, in the market, wherever you are, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You must be willing to align yourself. There is a kingdom in which you came from. So your assignment is to build for that kingdom. Don't say my, 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 my Christianity is okay for me. I don't need to talk to anyone. When you don't talk to anyone, when you don't win souls for the kingdom, sister, you are on a long team. And you need to be coming down because your Christianity is not for you alone. Hallelujah. As a believer, you are meant to build the kingdom. You are meant to win souls. You are meant to talk to others. You are meant to reach lives. You are meant to build life, a blessed life. Hallelujah. Most times when we talk about building life or a winning soul, we think it's such a big thing to do. Praise God. Even in the place of business, yesterday I went. I was having some business with some people. I used the opportunity to, to evangelize. And the lady was like, wow. I really come to know, I want to come to know you more. She's a pharmacist. She said, wow. One of these days, I want to come fellowship with you. It is my identity. I know Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number four thing, how many points have I given us? Three. Number four thing, give God your best. Your best. Hello. Give God your best. Your best. Give God your best. Don't wait to serve God when you 
to have extra. Hey, God is the one who sees the inside and not the outward. He is the one who sees what goes in inside and not who sees what goes in outside. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God your best. Because the plan that God has for you and I is for you, it's for me to, to accomplish the reason why we are here. His plan is for you to accomplish. It's for me to accomplish as well. Hallelujah. Your best time. Put effort. Don't say don't have time. All the time is for your work, your husband, your children, your saloon, your makeup artist. Those are the only time you have. You don't have extra time to do kingdom work. Put your effort. Give God your best time. Hallelujah. Your time, your gift. What area are you gifted at? In which area are you gifted at? Use it and serve God. There are people who God gave one. There are people who God gave three. There are people who God gave five. There are people who God gave six. I think I have about six. I sing. I write. What is it? Praise God. Use it. Whatever God has given you is for the kingdom. It is for his purpose. Your gift. Your focus. Hallelujah. You know why? Because God will bring out the best in you when you are giving him your best. When you are committed to give God your best, God will bring out the best in you. Hallelujah. Can I announce to us that three years uh, four years ago, I started, I became uh, 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 sold out to God. No more part time. No more part time ministry. That I became sold out to God. I, I have seen myself better than the way I used to be. Most of you that have been following, hello, is that true? Am I the way I used to be three years ago? service that you are doing, God will use it to bring out the best in you. Hallelujah. You think you are good man, you think you are beautiful, you think you have, you have wisdom, you think you have knowledge. Wait and start using it to serve God. Then you begin to see how you will start running. Hello. And you will see how you will start running. Praise God. Give God your best. Number five. Trust God's judgment. Hallelujah. Trust God's judgment. Because God knows the best for you. Praise God. He knows the best for you. Even when you don't understand, trust God. Hey. Even when you don't understand, please trust God. Can you open to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6 for me? Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Hallelujah.
myself, I thought I was going crazy. Even me. Because I didn't understand what was happening to me. 2014. It was as if something was was, was malfunctioning my brain. I don't know how to use that English. I don't know the right English to use. Was going on, hallelujah. When I told some of my staff that I was resigning, they said, Princess, how are you okay? Is there any problem? Is there any peace? Praise God. I didn't understand what was going on, but the fire, I didn't have my peace. Hallelujah. I didn't have my peace. I am sleeping, I'm hearing the Lord, it is time, it is time, it is time. I became a ghost of my own. If I turn, I will shake. I will turn, I will shake. I didn't understand what was going on. Hallelujah. When I took that bad decision, I didn't know where it was going to land me, but I just want to follow God stupidly. Ah, someone will follow God stupidly. We follow God stupidly and get to that point where nobody ever thought you would be. Somebody will be stupidly this morning in a way that it will announce the person to the next level in the name of Jesus. Amen. Trust God's judgment. Trust Him because He will direct thy path. Thank you. God bless you. He will direct your path. He will direct you where you are going to. You can never miss your destination when God is the one directing you. You can never miss that path if it is God that is leading you. So I say trust God's judgment. Trust his judgment. Hallelujah. Even when you don't understand him, trust him. Even when you don't know where you are going, sister, Please trust him. Even when you don't know what day you're going, what you're going to face, I say trust him. My mother said, "Are you going to leave everything you have and go and be uh, uh, serving another woman? I'm going to be sweeping house. Look at where you are. You want to bring yourself?" I said, "If Jesus washed the feet of his disciple, what has Jesus shown to us that we must be willing and ready?" To wash others' feet. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, No, it cannot be my great plan for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Trust Him even when you don't know where you're going. Even when you don't know what you're about to face, trust Him. Hallelujah. Trust Him because He will direct your path. And finally, discover your talent. Hey. Discover your talent. Discover your talent. Discover your talent. Make use of it. Don't be ashamed. A lot of people are still down where they are today because they are ashamed of using their talents. A lot of you watch out for me. Very soon, my album and the launcher. Hallelujah. <laughs> Very soon. I'll be you see people coming to me. I'll be writing songs, I'll be giving them. I'll be writing scripts, I'll be giving them. Hallelujah. Praise God. The world have not seen anything. People have not seen anything yet. My people said, how do they say that proverb? Okay, let me leave that. Hallelujah. You think you're seeing something, you have not started seeing anything. Praise God. Are you saying in your heart, ah, now this woman on her own too much. Wait till, oh. because the one way go, pepper your mind is coming. And Hallelujah. The one that will pepper and sweeten your heart is coming. So better embrace. Better embrace me now. Better rejoice with the gift that God has given me. Because the ones that I will soon unleash, the one who said only this woman God creates is coming. What am I saying? Discover your talent. There is a reason why God gave you that talent. 
have not given to you. Discover your talent. Hallelujah. Discover that talent. There is a reason why God put it inside of you. Discover it. As Christians, we have been called to develop that talent and gift God has given to us. Hello? If you don't develop the gift that God has given to you, it will just be there. Lying down dormant. It is a seed that God has put inside of you. It is a seed that God has put inside of you. Instead of you to water it, instead of you to use it, to nourish it, to water it, you are saying to yourself, hey, I don't want people to know that I can sing. I don't want people to know, to say, ah, ah, you too, you can write book too. Ah, ah, you have joined them. I don't want people to say, ah, ah, you too, ah, ah, you are doing cream too. Ah. I don't want people to say, ah, no, I want to just remain a mama and Kechi. I want to just remain mama and Neka. My sisters, use that talent. Hear me? There is a reason why God put that talent inside of you. A lot of people have left in torment. Praise God. Do you see what happened in 2020? And it's still happening now. A lot of people discover their talent. Hello. A lot of people discover their talent. A lot of people jumped into so many things and they were doing it. Praise God. <laughs> I said it was a year of pause. If you remember, that's what I said. I said to me, it's a year of pause. Where God has to, the noise has become so much that a lot of people are now depending on what they can do or on what the government can provide for them. The Lord had to put the year on pause so that so many people can actually discover their talent and begin to run for it. I cannot count how many people who developed their talent last year and they are using it wisely. Hello. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Discover your talent. Discover your talent. Because those gifts will enable you to reach other lives. That's life. Have you not seen people? When they did something or they sang, and someone just said, they say, ah. Oh, your voice that I heard this morning has given me hope. Your voice that I heard this morning gave me another meaning of life. Have you not heard things like that? So can you see that annoying it to you, you are tying some people down when you don't use your talents. I don't know who needs to hear this. When you don't use your talent, you are tying some people down. When you don't use the seed that God has given to you, you are actually depriving others. Hello? If corn did not germinate, are we going to chop corn this period? If tomatoes did not germinate, are we going to eat stew? If you go to my kitchen now, I have a, 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 a purple in the kitchen. I have a, a, a pineapple. I have orange. I have a banana more, I have apple. If those things did not grow, we are for sea and trouble. Praise God. And you and I know what those fruits does to the body. The same way your gift is so meaningful in the life of other people. The same way your gift is so vital in the life of others. The same way your gift is so important to the life of others. When you don't use the gift God has put inside of you, you are keeping other people down. You are starving. If I let me put it this way, you are starving other people. When you don't use the gift that has been given to you, you starve other people. Because when you feed people, they will spring forth of joy. When you feed people, they will be so full and they want to do more. When you feed people, Hallelujah. When you give a hungry man or a hungry woman,
our food. Is she happy or not? Very happy. When you give someone that is hungry food, is the person happy? Okay. When you are hungry and you don't see food, how do you feel? Not just very, very angry. Now, that is one part. Now, I need us to pay attention. This is one part that is very crucial. They say a hungry man is an angry man. It is the same way when you allow your gift to die. When you don't pour water on your gift, that is what happened to others. When you don't use the gift that God has given to you, that is what that is how you make other people feel. Hallelujah. So are you still wondering, God, where are you? Begin to look inside your life right now. Are you still wondering? Where God is leading you to? Are you still wondering where God wants to take you to? Or you are still hoping for that man or that woman that will send you five billion? Five billion for you to start business, sister. There is enough business inside of you. Are you still wondering? Saying, God, where are you? When will you bless me? There is a gift. There is a seed inside of you that you need to discover. Hallelujah. Are you ready to say, Lord, this year 2021, this is my year. This is my year. Are you ready to say, Lord, this is my year? Are you ready to say, Lord, this year is my year? This is a year that I can never remain the same. If you are that person, be on your feet. Let's begin to pray right now. Hallelujah. And you say, Lord, this is my year. Lift up your hands. Let's begin to pray. And you say, Lord, this is the year that you will do that that you have never done before. And you say, Lord, I believe that in this year, 2021, you will do the extraordinary for me. Lift up your hands and begin to say, Father, I thank you. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I worship you. Father, I give you all the glory. Lord, I give you all the praise. I thank you. Because you are faithful. Because you are just. There is a reason why you are still living. Because that gift is not meant to die. There is a reason why God still preserves you. It is not because of your righteousness. It is because that gift needs to produce another gift. Hey! There is a reason you are still breathing. There is a reason why the enemy have not been able to capture you. It is because that gift needs to produce another gift. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I come before you this hour. I come before you this moment and I humble myself. I come before you this time and I humble myself. I ask, oh God, that you open my eyes of revelation. You open my eyes of revelation. You open my eyes of revelation, oh God. That I see you the way you see me. 